So maybe you're in this situation. You have a nice new shiny toolbox. It's new, it's innovative, it's very cool. But after you fill it up with tools, and after you put it in your work van, and you drive like two miles and hit your first speed bump, all the tools that you organize in your toolbox are just completely in different locations, and everything looks like an absolute mess. Well, if that is a problem that you are having, I'm here to solve that today. Now, I'll try to put in some picture in picture screens here. I've tried multiple other methods of shadowing a toolbox, and what I'm gonna show you today is actually the easiest method that I've ever found. So we're just gonna start out, we're gonna do the two top drawers. The foam that I obtained was from Carnage Tools. It's a multi-layer, like peel apart foam, and there you can see how thick it is. It's about three. This foam is for a full-size toolbox, and these drawers, as stated, are only about 13 inches deep. I found that for this foam, if you're gonna mark on it, a silver Sharpie produces the best line and the best color. So after you do that, you'll just have to cut it. Now, the foam cuts really easily. Um, the only issue with this is that my utility blade wasn't quite long enough to get uh, all three inches on the first swipe, but if you just go over it you know, once or twice, it's really not that bad at all, and then you can just cut the rest of it out. After you get your template cut, you'll want to do a test fit in your toolbox and make sure it fits in there nice and snug because you don't want it to be moving around as this is our mobile toolbox. And that is perfect layer. If it's too tall, you can just peel off one layer of the foam. I would peel it off from the bottom side, not the top side, as that way you'll keep it nice and clean on that top side. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out a logical way to lay out your tools in the drawer so that you will maximize space and put the tools that you use the most where they're easiest to grab for you. So you may wanna play around with this just a little while because you only want to get that layout right once. Now when you do this, I recommend that you do your layout completely once, take a picture of it, take all the tools off, and then do another layout starting with a completely different tool. And after you do it two or three times, you'll get a pretty good idea of the best way to do it for you. Now there's actually two different ways to shadow a toolbox with this type of foam. The first method I'm gonna to to demonstrate is actually the tracing and then cutting method that we're all familiar with from the other videos that have been done on Kaizen foam. Um, as stated, you have to use a silver Sharpie for this to, to show up. Um, but as I continue to work with this foam, what I realized is that you don't actually have to trace with a Sharpie at all. Um, I'll get into that on the second drawer, but if you do wanna trace with a Sharpie, it's not the end of the world because maybe after you draw everything, um, with the Sharpie, you decide, oh, I wanna change it. And with the second method I'll show, that's not possible. So after you get everything traced out perfectly, you're ready to start cutting. And as you can see, that silver Sharpie really shows up well. So for straight lines, I'm just using a regular box cutter blade. There's almost no resistance when cutting the foam. It's very easy to cut. On the sections where there are more curves, I'm using an X-Acto knife blade that's curved. And you have to do kind of a reciprocal motion to, to get around those curves. can peel back the foam after you cut your shape one layer at a time. So after you peel off your first layer, you can lay your tool down and see if it sits at the correct height that you want it to sit at. So for me, I want my tools to just be just barely above the top of that foam, and that way they'll stay nice and tight when I put it in my van and I'm driving around. So now I'll peel off two more layers. And then something to note here, I take the X-Acto knife and I cut off an additional portion of foam. It's always better to cut a little bit narrower than your outline because you can always cut more, but if you cut the foam too wide, you can't you know, put it back. So keep that in mind. And now, as you can see, that's three layers of foam cut out, and that is the exact height that I want that tool to be at. And now I can just keep going. And this is a, an example here just to show you how easily the foam peels back. If you take your time and you do it nice and slow, you get a very good peel. and it completely separates. And as you can see, things are starting to take shape and I'm really thinking this is gonna turn out to look very good. Now 
Now when you peel the foam too fast, it does not completely separate from that bottom layer and you'll have to go in and peel out some of those slivers of foam that kind of leave themselves behind. It's not always easy to see because everything's the same color, but when you lay the tool in there, you'll be able to notice that some parts sit higher than the other. But when you have the foam completely peeled off, it should be kind of a uniform appearance in that recess. This shot shows an example of why this foam is so unique. It allows you to peel back different layers for different tools. So you can have two different tools that are completely different sizes, but they both present to you at the same height in the toolbox. And that makes for a much more professional look than some of the other Kaizen foam that's on the market. When you start cutting sockets and some other tools, it's always a good idea to save one of your foam cutouts and you can use that as a guide to see how many layers of foam you'll need to peel back. And sometimes it's hard to count the number of layers you're peeling back by hand and you'll still have to do a couple of test fits to make sure it sits at the correct height. You can see here that I've already cut the foam around the socket template but it's too narrow to get my fingers in. If you just use a nice set of tweezers, I found that it works very well for taking out those smaller pieces. And then for my shallow sockets, I'm gonna put all of those face up and then I'm gonna lay my deep well sockets as you've already seen horizontally in the same foam as I just like the way that it looks and I think it's going to give a good presentation. When you do shadow a toolbox, don't get caught up in some of the other videos you'll see on YouTube and I'm guilty of that myself where I only put the same type of tool in the same drawer so all your sockets will be in one drawer, all your wrenches will be in one drawer. Depending on what you do and how you use your toolbox, you'll probably want to organize things to where the tools that you use the most are all in the same drawer, and that way that's the one you're reaching in the most. So here we are on the second way to use this foam, and in my opinion, this is the easier way. It's just to use the X-Acto knife to cut the outline of the tool. And also, another pro tip, this foam is very deep. I recommend laying your wrenches in there vertically instead of horizontally because you save way more space and you can still tell what size they are based off how long they are and how thick they are, etc. Using it this way makes it a lot quicker. You don't have to worry about Sharpies or anything. You don't have to worry about uh, taking some rubbing alcohol and getting rid of the Sharpie lines after. The only thing about using this method is that you will have to kind of lay everything out first and then kind of take a mental picture of how you want it to look and then just go from there. So as you can see, I mean, the foam cuts really easily. It makes a very good line to follow with that X-Acto knife after you do the tracing. And it's just overall an easier way to do it, and it's much faster. The only issue that I ran into using this method was trying not to cut my fingers, which I managed to do. But just keep that in mind, the X-Acto knives are pretty sharp, and you don't want to cut your fingers. So now the wrenches are done, I'm gonna lay out my screwdriver and my tire lever and a couple of my picks. And here's a time you can play around and add some extra tools if you wanted to. And I'm gonna use the same method for the screwdrivers where I just trace and then I go back and cut. Now something interesting about the screwdriver is um, I can cut the handle and I can peel it back one length and then as far as the shaft of the screwdriver, I can cut that shape and peel back the foam at a different level so that the entire thing sits level in the toolbox and sits flush the way I want it. Also another tip is don't be afraid to use the edge of that foam. 
Because the foam is glued to the layer beneath it, it makes it a little bit stronger than if it was just one piece. If it was just one piece of foam and you cut all the way to the edge and through the foam, it's gonna lose some of that rigidity. But because this is glued to the layer beneath it, you can go all the way out to the edge like I did with those screwdrivers and use the side of the toolbox drawer to hold them in place without losing any of the rigidity of the foam. So now that you get everything in, you can just start putting your tools in. And of course, I'm taking my time. I'm really happy with the way that this looks. I'm happy with the way that it turned out. Boom, just check this out. I mean, you really can't, you really can't complain about the way this looks. I like that everything sits flush with the toolbox. Um, when I'm traveling, when it's in the van, nothing's rattling around. When I open up the toolbox, everything is exactly where I want it to be. And that's part of the benefits of this collapsing drawer system that it has. When you take a tool out, it's obvious that it's missing. And, and the best part about this is if you have a job where you're kind of a traveling technician, if you are a traveling technician, you may drive two or 300 miles to go to a job site. You don't want to leave a tool there only to return home and figure out, hey, this is gone. And most of the time, you're just going to wind up eating that cost yourself and going ahead and buying yourself another tool. Whereas if your toolbox is shadowed, you will have a reasonably good idea of whether or not something is missing. And even on these pick and hook sets, I even was able to cut the curve of that pick, which, you know, there's not a lot of foam out there that you can actually get that level of detail with. So this is the second part of this video series where I'm organizing the drawers. So for toolbox organization, this is the drawer section. I am gonna do a section on the deeper, the big bin in the bottom, because a lot of toolboxes have big drawers and deep bins. And I'm gonna do a section on how to organize that to make it best for you. But uh, that's all for today. I've got some work to get to, so thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And also, please check out Carnage Tools and use code CREATIVE15. You will get 15% off of your first order. That is your entire order, not just this foam product. Not only are they distributors of some tool lines like Nebo, True Utility, or Power Probe, they're also coming out with their own line of tools. So they've got some flashlights that are on the way. They've got a pretty interesting portable jumper cable set that's on the way. And they've got plenty of stuff in the works. They're going to add tool lines, you know, as the year continues. So, you know, the link is in the description. Feel free to go check them out.